How you doing, Romeo? Okay. Okay. Now, let me ask you, um, why? What brought you to our office? Um, well, because I had, um, I think I was mistreated in a case. Um, I got my unemployment cut off from my previous job. That they said, um, that they said I wasn't, um, I was supposed to be hired by them because of my supposedly criminal record. Criminal record. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, you kind of look like like a criminal. Like you got <laughs> got a tan and and and, and, and you're in relatively good health, right? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, so so wait a minute. So now you said supposed criminal record, right? Because I don't have a criminal record, but that's what she said. Oh come on, you can tell us. Yeah. No, I don't have a criminal record. <laughs> no, did. no bank robbery. Never. <laughs> how 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 about a supermarket? Never. No. Um. Let's see. Uh, how about jaywalking? Never. Never? Never. How about turnstile jumping? Never. Okay, and so they said that you couldn't keep your job because you have a criminal record. Right. And this is a company here in New York? Right. What type of place, employer is it? It's um, home for elderly people. Home for elderly people. Okay, well, we could see that. You, you want... You don't want dangerous people near near uh, uh, fragile people, right? Right. Okay. So let's see. Um, at some point, uh, were you ever arrested? Yes, I just I did get arrested. You did get yeah, arrested. Yeah. Okay. How old are you? Uh, Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. And when was your first arrest? Um, June something last year, two thousand and ten. So last year. Yeah. So you're 37. So your first arrest was at 36? Yeah, 36. And, 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 and you're not white, right? <laughs> not at all. You sure? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> and your first arrest was at, at 36? Yeah. What do you do? Like hide like when the cops nah, come or something? I just don't do anything wrong. No, but that don't matter. <laughs> you don't have to do nothing wrong. Did you do anything wrong for this arrest? But you're right, I didn't. No. <laughs> oh, you're right, you're right. You're wait right. a minute. I oh, didn't, you're okay. right. <laughs> so you, you didn't do anything wrong for this yeah. one. Okay. So now let me get this straight. Um, what were you arrested for? Just what was the charge? Don't go into too much detail. Whatever. Disorderly, um, disorderly. Disorderly conduct. Yeah, kind of, yeah. So, you know, you can get a disorderly conduct ticket. Because you're standing on the sidewalk and the cop doesn't like it. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, it actually went up to the um, New York State Court of Appeals. It's the highest court in New York State. And this was recent, where I, I believe mm -hmm. they said, well, look, that's just ridiculous. But cops write disorderly conduct for any stupid thing. If you say good morning and they don't like your tone, they can give you disorderly conduct. For real? Well, it may not be upheld, but who uh, fights it? Costs too much to fight, right? Right, right. All right? But you did fight. What happened to your disorderly conduct ticket? Well, they got dismissed. Well, well wait a minute, wait a minute. There was no... So, so you mean not only is it just a disorderly conduct... Right. But it got dismissed? Yep. By judge test? Right. So a judge... Actually signed the paper dismissing the charge against you. Yes, he did. Did you pay him off? No, <laughs> no I didn't. <laughs> you sure? I'm sure. Okay, so now, wait a minute, wait a minute. So this early conduct, let me tell you, uh, when you went there, they offered you a plea bargain of like 25 <laughs> bucks, right? They said, you pay 25 bucks and, we, and, and, and that'll be the sentence, right? Right. And if you don't, you're risking, what, like a day, a, a bigger fine, like a $100 fine or something like that. Yeah, that's pretty much what they do. But uh, in my case, they didn't even say, they would just say, just don't do anything wrong. That's all they told me. So the prosecutor looked at it and said, what is this crap? Right, pretty much, yeah. Okay. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Okay, so how's that going to hurt old elderly people? I don't see how. Okay, well, how. in New York State, it is against the law, even if you were convicted of murder, to discriminate against you 
on the basis of your criminal record. Even if you were, were convicted of murder. Wow. Convicted, found guilty. Yeah. They have to say why you're a danger. Now, I think they could they could find the danger if you were convicted of murder or robbing elderly people or stealing from their accounts or something. But in your case, you weren't convicted. It's dismissed, right? Right. Um, and on top of that, it's not even a crime. Uh, uh, disorderly conduct is a violation, like a parking ticket. Right. That's why they say pay 25 bucks and go home, right? Yeah. So, wait a minute. So this is what they, they fired you for? Right. That's what she said. Okay. So now, what, what, well, wait a minute. See, now under federal law, there's a problem with using criminal history to hire people and fire people, to, to avoid hiring people and firing people because criminal, criminal, uh, the criminal justice system seems to attach itself mainly to people with darker skin. Uh, minorities, blacks. Now, you you have darker skin, right? Right. <laughs> right. Where are you from? Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Well, that's right next door to Haiti. You, yeah. you, you, you got you got you got some darker skin there. So let's see. Now, if the federal law says you're not allowed to discriminate, and the state law says you're not allowed to discriminate, right? Um, unless you can show some some real basis there. How do you justify getting fired? For what amounts to a parking ticket, <laughs> I don't. I don't see no way to justify that. Okay, well, I'd have to agree with you. Um, yes. Now, on top of just firing you, I mean, they didn't just fire you and say, "Shh, don't tell nobody." What did they do? Well, they said in front of people that I would feel embarrassed in front of all the, like at least five other people. So they said in front of five employees. Right. And in fact, they had told other employees even before you heard about it, correct? Right. That's how I found out that something was up. Okay, so you were there for three days, right? right. And in those three days, uh, you were actually receiving unemployment before taking oh, this yeah. job. Yeah. So now somehow they got a hold of your rap sheet. Right. And that's why they decided that you're a criminal menace. Right. And told the other employees about it. Right. And did they, I mean, did they tell anyone other than the employees? Uh, I think they told, the, uh, pa somehow the patients got to know too. So, yeah. like over 100 patients. Right. So, 100 yeah. patients, uh, maybe 100 some odd employees all hear about your menacing yeah. criminal history. And not only that, I also st I started believing that I, I'm not capable to get another job again. Well, how she made me feel. Well, but she yeah. also was telling other jobs yeah. too, right? Yeah. This is going all over the place. This is a parking ticket. I mean, this is a disorderly yeah. conduct, so it's not even a crime. It's a, a violation. It doesn't count as a crime. It's not yeah. a felony. It's not a misdemeanor. And this is what she's she's doing all of that for. Yeah. Man, what if you had done something for real? I mean, yeah. what if you had been convicted of something for real? What I mean, what's left? Right. She went that extreme. Now, let me tell you, um, something like an old age home can get a rap sheet legally, um, but it's a special rap sheet, so it's not uh, it's it's not going to have dismissed charges on it. See, police can get all the charges, whether dismissed or whatever, but regular people, uh, a regular employer can't even get any rap sheet. Now, certain employers, like in, in positions like an old age home, can get uh, a criminal uh, rap sheet because, you know, you don't want to find out, oh, well, they're, they're like on trial for beating up 10 old people and we just hired them. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, but how on earth is she going to get a hold of something that's not even criminal? Right. Of a uh, 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 disorderly conduct? So that seems somewhat illegal, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And how'd she yeah. get a hold of, of of a charge that's dismissed and it's not even a crime? So it's supposed to be sealed. It's supposed to be yeah. hidden from everybody except like the FBI might be able to get yeah. it. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I feel um, really disappoint disappointed at the system and uh, everything pretty much because I feel like my privacy got also got taken away from me too. 
Yeah. But that. Uh, you think yeah. you, you have privacy in this country, huh? Yeah, yeah, I do think so, yeah. No. Well, not anymore. You must have, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> you must have, Not anymore. You must think you're in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> Maybe. <huh? laughs> but I did think so till then. Till then. Yeah. Well, what are you doing about it? You doing anything about it? Well, right now I'm, I'm trying, trying to see if I take it to court and see if I get some justice. And, well, to court and, or uh, to, are you making a complaint? A complaint, pretty much. You're yeah. making a complaint. Yeah. Okay, not to court, to an agency. Right. Okay. So you're actually taking, making a federal complaint against her for discriminating right. against you. And it's also got, I mean, you mentioned uh, corrections law. Uh, section 752, Article 23A. So you, you also know some state law there, huh? <laughs> a little, little. <laughs> How'd you learn it? I've been listening to, to my agent. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you something. <clears throat> if she hadn't tried to cheat you of your unemployment, would you have known how illegal what she did was? Well, honestly, I, if... If that would never happen, I would never find out all these that I know now. I would have just left. I would have just kept, you know, taking my unemployment. I would have let everything go. And right. But instead, she's trying to shoot down your unemployment going back in time, right? Right in time. I'm supposed to pay everything that they had gave me since. Prior to having right. that job. Yeah. So she's really doing doing a number on you. Yeah, she's really trying to hurt me, yeah. Well, guess what? We're going to see what can be done. Because that is the most outrageous example. <laughs> I mean, you, you're not, you don't even have a crime. I mean, you don't have a conviction at all. What the hell is she doing holding that against you? Yeah. <clears throat> um, this is beautiful. And then she went and told everybody. And they spread it around to patients. You know, it looks like a, a nice fat slander uh, mm -hmm. lawsuit. I, I, you know, I wish you the uh, best of luck. Your complaint Thank will you. be in the system, you know. Um, you know, once, once it's, uh, once you've finished your uh, 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 swearing to its truth and everything, and obviously it's true. You got too much documentation. They even told unemployment a lot of stuff, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and the unemployment people suddenly became your worst enemy. Oh yeah, right? yeah. The way they treat him and talk to me over the phone is. Yeah. is I mean, what have. what the hell is she yeah. telling them? I mean, did she look up mm -hmm. disorderly conduct? Maybe mm -hmm. she thinks it's something else. I don't think she did. Got to say to treat me the way she treated me when I went there. She she probably don't know. Oh, what? I mean, disorderly con yeah. unbelievable. So <laughs> this is why. I mean, on top of everything else, one of the main things is is you can't have people going around discriminating uh, on on so-called neutral basis, like um, <coughs> like criminal record, because they can get it wrong, right? Yeah. And on top of getting it wrong, even if you were guilty of something, you're entitled to to have a job and a career, and they, it, without some sort of reasonable basis for you not to have that particular job, they can't just uh, swing against you and attack you anyway. But in your case, this is the most extreme, perfect example of why idiots shouldn't have uh, record other people's private records. <coughs> so Romulo. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right, and we'll see what happens. Uh, good luck with the unemployment case. I think you got it knocked knock dead. Uh, once you show the certificate of disposition for this stupid uh, disorderly conduct ticket and you got Judge Test, yeah. <laughs> right? His name right there, <laughs> dismissing the damn thing. Uh, you know, I, the only thing you could do more is get the prosecutor to, to explain why they thought the ticket was so bad they just dismissed <laughs> it on their own. Right, everyone. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, that is, is really extreme. So, uh, you know, hopefully your experience will help other people learn their rights and, um, yeah, we'll see. You know, maybe we'll get an update after your unemployment case is over. Uh, and then hopefully we get an update after your federal issue is over, too. And let's see if she still does this again. <laughs> and, and if you happen to find any other people she did it to, you know where to send them, okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks again, Rami. You're welcome. Okay, take care. <laughs> Hold your hand. Now, uh, you were working at the uh, airport? Taxi dispatcher, yes. Which airport? At JFK. JFK. And um, now, 
you ended up losing your job. Tell me what happened. Well, they was claiming that I was taking bribes from from the taxi drivers. Mm -hmm. So when they arrest me, you know, I had to go through everything to find out what they were charging me. So what you, was the charge? You just got arrested. And you didn't just even get know why. Because yes, they were saying, they were saying first, and then you know, like when I had to go for the uh, for the interview, they didn't show up or anything like that. So that means they didn't have no proofs or nothing. But you still lost your job. I still lost my job, yes. So you were found guilty before... Before being, anything. Before anything. Okay. So now, um, uh, to add insult to injury, um, so you lose your job and you've got bills to pay, right? Yes, because mm. you don't you don't get the, um, the unemployment right away. Okay, but you didn't get the unemployment at all, right? I didn't get it because I said, you know what, let me wait two months and see if I can find another job. Okay. And then I can't get no job. So I said, well, might as well just get unemployment. All right. And so you filed for unemployment. What happened? The unemployment, they say, um, they say they had to go through and call the company and find out everything and see if I was available. And what happened then? So they take like a couple months and then they say, okay, I was going to get the unemployment. But it takes a few months for you to start getting it. Okay, so now you, you filed, but didn't they challenge your unemployment? The unemployment challenged me after the first six months. Okay, so you were getting unemployment for six months. Yes. And then they came back and said what? Yeah, they say that uh, the unemployment, uh, they got to see if you're looking for jobs or really looking for jobs. Okay, and so, you're really looking, right? Yeah, I got a big folder like this of places that I went to, like mm -hmm. every single day, every single day. And then what happened? And then the same thing, you know, about six, every six months, the unemployment saying you have to see if you're looking for jobs. Okay. And then at some point they took away your unemployment? Yes, yeah, some point, yes, yeah, they take it away. And what they say the reason was? Well, they say they had to get some, I had to show up to the main unemployment office to see if I can continue receiving the unemployment benefits. And did they tell you at any point that you were going to lose your benefits yes, because yes. of because of the arrest, right? Yes. Okay. So what what did they say um, what did they say about the arrest? Oh, the arrest is say they, um, they don't have no proofs yet. They don't have no proofs yet. So I got to come in with my own proofs. Right. So when I prove them, they will from there they will take they will go on. And they didn't do that. They didn't do that because when I show my proofs, everything was showing up on my favor. So they didn't like that. So they didn't like that. So, so actually, there's no proof of anything. And they didn't show up. The other, my my job place, they didn't show up. The lawyers or any, nobody show up. Okay, and so then um, you ended up. The the judge said to you. That you got that you won, right? Yeah, they sent me the letter and saying that I won because they didn't show up and the proofs that I have it helped me out and everything it was okay. Okay, now one of your proofs was is that uh, your criminal charges were dismissed, right? Yes, yes. Okay, they were um, or not dismissed. Um, sorry, Julio, uh, but they they found you guilty of disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct, not like like there was there was proven. Um, and taking brave. Okay, so um, so they're trying to say that you were that you were um, um, taking bribes from taxi drivers. Yes. And that's only because there was a fight between taxi drivers, right? And yeah, you know, one says and the other one says, and, but anybody can say, but they gotta get the proof. But they have no proof. They don't have no proof. They they all they did was just arrest you and yeah, take you away. And take me and then find out and you know nothing nothing. Nothing there. Uh, just a great great way to lose a job, right? Yes. I mean, with no proof, no nothing. You and know? then you fire. And, that's it. and no unemployment. And right? no unemployment. Yeah. yeah. So that was real sad. That was really rough, huh? Yeah. Are you glad it's over? Yes, I'm glad. After one year, you know, it's just good. Um, and the judge actually said, hey, this is disorderly conduct. What's this have to do with bribery? Yes, 
because when they look at the charges, you know, I when I get my um my paper from the court, yeah, you know, they they got what what's your charge. But did anyone tell you what your charges no, were? No, they didn't tell me. It just had a just number. Say, yeah, they just have a number. And and so you actually you, you got a representative to help you look yeah, up the number. Yeah, representative to help me because I don't know those numbers. You glad you got some help? Yes, I got, I'm glad that. You helped me out. <laughs> <laughs> so you got some help from CMH. CMH, yes, sir. Uh, CMH, they all helped me up and everything, so I get through. Okay, so things are better now. Things are better now. Okay, still, still looking for work. I still looking for work every day. I gotta go in employment office tomorrow afternoon, and shop them that I still looking so for. So a couple, jobs. couple of things is uh, looking yeah, promising. But, I mean, I, I just gotta carry and show them that I'm looking for a job every day. And do you actually have a job that, that you've gone back to like eight times, and they, they say they're just waiting, right? Yes, I actually, yeah, I went to one place on the uh, Kennedy, and I went through everything because after six months, you out from the airport. You gotta go back and do everything all over. You gotta apply. You gotta apply. You gotta go for a background check. You gotta do for classes to driving in the airport, and your ID. Yeah, your ID takes about a month or two months to get it back. Oh boy! So you still got a long way to go. You got a long way, but you think you might end up back at the airport? Yes, I already got it. I, I'm I'm already in. They're just looking for a spot for me. Yeah. So. So it's good the unemployment kept you holding till you could get your new position, right? Yes. yes. What could, could I ask what your new position is going to be? Yes. Uh, um, well, I, what I do is um, ramp, ramp ramp agent. Okay. Yeah. Ramp agent is over the planes. Yeah. The inside of the airport. Yeah, that's great. So well, that's what I do. Good luck to you and congratulations on you winning your hearing. Okay. You did. You 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 had a little a little bit of a battle there, huh? Let me ask you: Did you look for for a lot of uh, reps? Did you try to find other help? Well, I was looking for. I was looking for. How many did you look look for? Did you speak to any? I speak like about two or three, but nobody come out. You know, like like how you help me out. Did they say that they, they, they just don't... say it and then you got to come in and then we going to look at it. You know, they don't really take care of it until you show up there with all the proofs that you don't really have it right now. Right. You got to get it first. Right, right. And then you get you and got then, it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Well, listen, congratulations and good luck with the, with the job, hon. It looks like you're doing pretty good, though. You're narrowing down on a couple. Yes, now I get him back on track. Yeah. All right, Julio, thanks. Oh. Okay, Romulo, how you doing today? All right. All right. Now, we're over here. We're in front of the Appellate Division First Department. This is where all the attorneys like, swear in who sworn in to the First Department. That's Manhattan and the Bronx. And, uh, you know, they have the beautiful, beautiful statuary. This is a, a nice court building. Now, this judge, this ALJ, Administrative Law Judge, right, um, he decided that he didn't like what the real judge, Judge Tess, did, right? So he didn't like that your case was dismissed. He decided you were convicted anyway. He convicted you anyway, right? Right. All right. Well, he's not a judge, right? Okay, I want you, you're going to go in here. Now, they're going to tell you you have to go down to Broadway. But you're going to go in this door and you're going to tell them that you will, right here, right here, you're going to tell them you've got, you want a complaint about, you want to make a complaint about a lawyer who's ignoring, who overruled the judge's ruling. The administrative, a lawyer who basically decided he knows better than Judge Test and is ignoring Judge Test's dismissal. Go on in and tell us what happened. Go on. Look. Okay, what happened? They told me to go to another address. In 59, was that down on Broadway? Yeah, 61 Broadway. Come on. All right, good, good. So, now they told you what to do, right? Uh, not really, they just told me to go over there to the address. They, they said go see them, right? Right. Okay, so, did I know what I was talking about? 
Yes, yes, do. Yeah, Broadway, right? Yep. Okay, you got it. All right, so you ready to go? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go. All right. <laughs> um, so your representative just sat there quietly while all this was going on. No, my representative actually um, stated that there were the practices that the judge was engaging in. I can't. Well, well, for, well, well let's word, let's word. say the word objection. Did did your representative object? object. My representative objected quite so a few for, times. For, but first, he objected nice and gentle, right? That's correct. And the judge failed to. Well, no, she said you'll get to see it when I'm good and ready. ready. Right? That is correct. And my representative um, clearly stated that there was so there was a few violations on the judges. Um, Conduct as well as how the judge was um, basically conducting everything. Right, basically, basically doing the whole thing. It's like even though we're in the room, we can't see what they're, they're, they're talking about yeah. and pointing and pointing back and switching papers. And, and we're not able to see anything. And we're not able to then and say, well, didn't you say that was something else? It's like they were working together. together. Yes, and the judge was, all the judge could say is, you'll get your turn to speak. And my representative stated that there's a lot of th that what was taking place was wrong, and the judge failed to give my representative a chance to state clearly or to even see yes any of the paperwork in which was being passed back and forth. He my representative also explained to the judge that that is wrong that it's a hearing, and it's your hearing, it's not just no, any hearing. That's correct, and that. We are entitled to see what it is that it, the company's representative is showing the judge. Oh, and what the judge is showing them. I mean, they were panning things back and forth. That's correct. So that, and then at the end, the judge gives two little pieces of paper and says, "Oh, well, you can you can take a look." Well, what, where was all the stuff? What is all that testimony where yes. she couldn't get it clear? That's correct. Um, at that point in time, my representative had no way to make any specific references to whichever was whichever piece of paperwork was handed to the judge. How did that make you feel? I felt, I honestly, I felt that I was being taken advantage of. By who? By the judge and it's supposed to be a legal system that's set and everything is supposed to be conducted in a certain fashion. I felt like... I wasn't, no one was really... You, weren't, you, you didn't have any rights, right? In a sense, correct. I felt violated. Okay, well, let me tell you, it's worse than that. 